the Lord has made.
Thank you for watching us live and all your support. If you want to continue supporting us, go to our YouTube channel, click subscribe, and click the bell for all post notifications. Amen. Our mission statement, Rehoboth House of Worship People for a Generation Rehoboth well, House of Worship is a place of enlargement and flourishing in the truth of our God's holy word. Our vision is to honor, reverence, worship, and glorify the name of our wonderful Lord and Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, and to live a life worthy of his calling on our lives. Our desire is that all men, women, and children, regardless of nationality, economical status, past history, our present condition, flourish in the house of God through a saving, living faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. Our goal is to maintain an atmosphere of love as Jesus has commanded us so that all men will know that we are his disciples. Our heart is to see lives changed, set free, healed, and delivered through preaching and teaching the God, the unadulterated word of God by the Spirit's power. Our passion is to raise and prepare a church that will be ready to live with God's etern with God eternally at Jesus' soon return. Our vision is founded on Genesis 26, 22, and Psalms 93, 12 through 15. And we believe it shall be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Amen.
and I'm not even supposed to be up here, but I had to release this because I noticed that right now, and I don't know why the Lord keeps saying this, but it's so strong that this is really a season and a time of great warfare. Yeah, yeah. That you have to know how to war in the spirit. Yeah, yeah. You have to know how to fight for your children. It's amazing we just come to church and we sit and we gather and we just come for a wonderful church experience. But at the same time, there are so many areas that many of us are being defeated in. All because we don't know how to walk That's in the it. spirit. That's it. That's when you know how to walk, the enemy cannot have your children. Come on. Come on. You don't even understand what you're raising in your household. They're the next evangelists. They're the next prophets. They are the next pastors. They are the next teachers. They are the next generation. Yes, God. Yes. And as parents, I understand that we have to know how to do warfare. Yes. We have to know how to fight in the spirit. Let me go ahead and put you on the next level. You have to know how to walk heavy in your victory. Right. You have to know how to walk in your victory. You have to know how to do warfare. You have to know how to chase demons out of your children's life. You have to know how to cut off Y'all miss it. See, y'all need to have a cute church. That's it. That's it. But it's much deeper than that. In this moment and season, you have to stand up and say, look, let me tell you something, devil. Why is it your face? That you will not have not one of my children. I'm taking back my children, my family, my household. I'm taking back my life for God. Everything belongs to the Lord. And I declare that every one of my children, every seed will be saved. Oh God, y'all miss it, y'all miss it. But see, sometimes you gotta lie to the first and get in that place. You have to put your life on the altar first and let God consume you first. Because we're living in a season and a time right now that the enemy is not playing any games. And you can stop your ears all day long and say, I don't believe in the devil. He will tear your house open. Yes. Yes. Woo. My God. Come on. The power, the power of God is so real. Yes, it is. The power of God can touch and transform every life. Yes. And my friend this morning in this place, I'm so tired of watching the body of Christ in defeat. I don't know about you. And, and, and there are some things, Lord, God, that the Lord is speaking in the back. I can't even say right now. I gotta meet with you privately, some folk, wow. and tell you because what you don't understand is God is ready for you alive. Yeah, that's it. He's tired of you walking and doing your own that's thing. That's it. That's it. You are so in your own thing, in your own thing, your own way. God wants your life that's so it. that He can show His glory and goodness, and you will be surprised what would happen. When the Lord consumes your life first. Yeah, that's it. These young people on this stage and young people that are even watching, here is the scary thing. Here's the thing that I'm afraid of. I'm afraid that these young people that you saw on this stage right now, how many of these young people will lose their life to the end? How many of these young people will be standing praising God in the next five years? Right, right. The next six years, the next seven years. Where will they be? Come on. Let me tell you something. Many of these young people and young people that are watching, they grow up in what we call families, broken homes. Right, right, right. But let me go ahead and deal with that because the Lord shared something with me about that too. God can fix whatever he can do. Yes, yes, yes. He is a fixing God. Yes, so no yes. one for even is had an excuse. God can but here is the thing. We have to get in the presence of God. Get consumed with the Spirit of God. And then take the authority that God has given us in the name of Jesus. And we go, watch this. Many of us were with broken families. Hallelujah. We all have come from something. From mom and daddy. We can go down the list. And if not mom and daddy, something we've experienced in our lives and it causes us to go through something. But that is no excuse when we serve a God that can heal every broken place. 
If you don't believe me, all you have to do is turn to Ezekiel and you look at the text and as he was dealing with the house of Israel, he, the Bible says that God set Ezekiel in the middle of a valley full of dry bones. And then he said, son of man, can these bones live? And the condition looked so bad that the, the response of the prophet was, only you know, O Lord. But then God began to tell him, well, what you do is speak to the bones. He spoke what God said. And as he spoke, things started coming back together. Hallelujah, that was broken, that was dismantled. And I understand that this was a vision, but it was a prophetic move because something was happening as he was speaking. The word of God, stuff that was that looked hopeless started coming back together again. And God said, I want you to understand this is the whole house of Israel. Yeah. They say our hope is gone. Let me tell you something. In God, hallelujah, the hope is renewed. Come on. Yeah. These young people that are standing here right now, they're depending on us to live for God, to speak over yes. their lives. Yes. And I believe that we have the power in God in the name of Jesus if we just stay saturated in the presence of God that we don't have to lose not one young person that's connected to our lives. Yeah. So I want you right now to be responsible and I stood up here to release this declaration and to release this mandate over this house. For every man and woman of God in this room, I declare and I decree in the name of Jesus that you shall stand in the gap for this generation. Yes. And yes. even though that there is a great deception in the culture that's taking their lives there was, there, was, there was great brokenness. There, there was great enchantments in the culture. But I believe that Christ is higher and greater and stronger than the influences of the culture. And I believe that we as men and women of God need to stand and pray a covering over our young people. And we begin to declare what God has called them to be. We need to stand and fight for them. Watch this. Hallelujah. You can only, we can only make so much money. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Come on, saints of God. We can only own so many vehicles and cars. That's there are it. some things in life that are greater yes. than our stuff. That's it. Oh, yes. Come on, saints. Oh, we can only own so much. At some point in time, we got to stop and say, what is really important? That's it. That's it. That's it. Come on. I want you to be an instrument in this room right now that you will stand and believe God that you would be one of the ones the vessels and the instrument that God can use yes. right now, hallelujah, to cover, to pray, and to live, glory to God, before God, to bring these young people to Christ, that the blindness will be snatched off of their minds, yes. Yes. that they will see the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that you will take the responsibility, not just for your kids, but for this generation, yes. to be a voice for God, right. to be a voice for God, to be a voice for God in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me share this with you. I spent most of my time and years in ministry, and I will always stand in the gap for other people's children that I did not give birth to. Right, right, right. And in one season, I was sharing this with someone, in one season, I got so tired because I said to myself, I'm standing in the gap of trying to pick up the slap right. for something that another man dropped or right. another woman dropped. Right, right. But I did it because I love the young people yeah. and I love this generation. Yes. And my heart went out. And, and I, I, I started getting hurt from some of the very young people that I stood in the gap for. Right. And I, I remember feeling this feeling of, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm just going to focus on my three and my three only. All because right. those are the ones that God has given me. And when I tell you conviction hit my yeah, heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Conviction hit my heart. Yeah. Because God did not call us just to That's stand right. in the gap for our future. That's right. That's it. That's, That's it. it. That's but for this next generation that's yeah. standing up here right now, every one of these children should feel like yours. Yes. That's you should right. feel that's a responsibility it. to say that I want to yeah. live God. They, they're only going to see God in me. Yes, yeah. it is. I'm going to go and sow into their lives. I'm going to fight for them. I'm going to intercede for them. Yes. I'm going to get out of my own life. I'm going to stop focusing on just my own interests. And I'm going to care about this next generation. Yes. And I am going to be responsible to yes. be a voice for God oh, yeah. to oh, these yeah. young people. Yes, How many can take that challenge? Oh, yes. 
So we get on Facebook, we do all the little crazy challenges that don't need that. No longer be distracted with the things of this world. Keep your mind busy on the things that God really cares about. And these young people are important to God. Turn your hearts this morning towards the love and the affection for these young people. They don't have to be lesbians. They don't have to be homosexuals. They don't have to be, glory to God, caught up in sexual immorality. They can grow up to be powerful young men yeah. and women of God. They don't have to grow up smoking whatever they smoke. Now, some of the stuff, I don't even know what it is that they smoke. But, but the stuff that they're caught up in with drugs and, and alcoholism and all of yeah. these things, yeah. they don't have to get caught up in any of those things. Right. right. Somebody asked the question, why are so many young people getting caught up in those things? You know why? Because so many people who claim to be in God are out of position. So my prayer for this house is that we will be a place, hallelujah, that will stand in the gap and be concerned about this next generation. My daughter is about to come right now and I made it my business not to pump up anybody too much. But I must say that I am very proud of the fact that this young lady has a love for God. Amen. Not to say that she's perfect, not right. this life. We're all flawed in areas. Right. But I'm gonna tell you, this baby wore me out. Come on. Ah, yes indeed. <laughs> this was the quiet one. She wore me out emotionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On, yeah. She drained me to tears. Come on. Help somebody today. Some of the ideas she had in her mind, I was like, where in the world did it come from? <laughs> she talked the smartest, yeah. probably disrespected the most. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come on. But probably hurt me to the core beyond words a few times. Veronica was a kid that grew up, she probably only had like one or two cookers her whole life. Yeah. Because yeah. She didn't bring that type of situation in the household when she was coming up. Right, right. She was always quiet. Right, right. I had no idea that on the inside there was a raging storm. Yeah. That was going on on the inside because she was so quiet, I couldn't see it. Jesus. But part of it was because I was so busy doing ministry. Uh -huh. I was caught up in making sure that everybody else yes, is held yes, together. That's right. Come on here. Help somebody. Not tonight. understanding what she needed from me yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. Come on and be real, Pastor. Help somebody. But I understood that there was something special yes. about her when yeah. she was young because after every word I preached, she yeah. would always come up to me and say, Good word. Yeah. Amen. Every time. I think, well, what is a seven year old talking about? Good word. Amen. How did she Amen. understand that? I had no idea that God was doing something. Come on. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll speak about I'll speak about the other ones later, but right now I gotta go with the flow of the spirit. Come on, have your way, God. Have your way, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I never understood that even the magnitude of the hurt when we went through a personal family hit. Yeah. How it had affected her yeah. soul. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. things that she had to be healed from. Yeah. And I remember on Sundays we were in a little bitty building called the the, the, the Hills. And I think it was a Holiday Inn on Cherry Lane. Yeah. And and the Spirit of God was so moving in this little room. Yeah. That's when we were the new Rehoboth. They just yeah. become the new church. And, yeah. and we were in this little bitty room. Yeah. And the word of the Lord would get so strong and we were the altar call and, and they had to move the chairs out the way. And God was moving. And I look on the end and there is no VC. Crying out to God. Yeah. Crying out to God. Jeez. And I knew that there was something special and unique yes. that God was doing in her. But I also knew how the enemy was yeah. using yeah. situations yeah. to try to kill her purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. Oh, he tried, he tried, he tried, he tried. The 
but you never give up on your children. You never give up on God and what His purpose. Sometimes you may have to let it go for a little bit, yeah, but yeah. don't ever give up or don't yeah. ever stop praying. Yeah, come on here. My Lord. My Lord. She put me in a place, I remember, to where I no longer could give her counsel. Yeah, yeah. But he could not stop my time in my prayer closet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I found out that what took place in my prayer closet was more powerful than my counsel. Yeah. To give a word for the Lord. And, 
and and even though for some of those it may not be as deep as you want it to be. Oh, no. oh but you get it. Come on. Oh, but it's something good. is from God. Oh, but it's good. Oh, it but it's good. Come on, that's it. And it has the power that is necessary Give me some to bring about the change. That's right. That's right. And I thank God for the innocence of her heart Amen. and her right. love for God. And her love to serve yes. God. Yes. Some of the terminologies that she's about to use or has used, some of it I don't understand. She has to break it down because it's from a different generation. Right. But on. her generation That's it. understands it. And I pray that God will raise up voices like her. Yes. And yes. even yes. the voices that are coming from your household yes. to reach the generation. Yes. Can I say this in closing? Have we have way. enough children uh -huh. that are serving the devil. Yeah. We need somebody serving the Lord. Yeah, yeah, the devil already has a whole lot of children. Come so on. Many. We need something. We need our children serving the Lord. So, yeah. so let's lay claim to that as we as we believe God for the salvation yeah. of our young people, that they will be raised to yeah. serve in the house of God yeah. and that they will be mighty in God. So it is with great pleasure and with great honor that I bring to this pulpit, this stage, this platform, this consecrated place, Veronica Seora Williams. Restrain him, 
any longer, even with a chain. In fact, he had frequently been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles smashed, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the hillsides, he was always crying out and bruising himself with stones. Catching sight of Jesus from a distance, he ran and prostrated himself before him, crying out in a loud voice, What have you to do with me? Jesus, Son of, Son of the Most High, Most High God, I adjure you by God, do not torment me. He had been saying to him, Unclean spirit, come out of the man. He asked him, What is your name? He said. He replied, Legion is my name. There are many of us. And he pleaded earnestly with him not to drive them away from the territory. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside. And they pleaded with him, send us into the swine. Let us enter them. And he then let, he, and he let them in the unclean spirit. And the unclean spirit came out and entered the swine. The herd of about 2,000 rushed down a steep bank into the sea where they were drowning. The swine herds ran away and reported the incident in the town and throughout the countryside. And people came out to see what had happened. As they approached, Jesus, as they approached Jesus, they caught sight of the man who had been possessed by legion. Sitting there clothed in all his and clothed in his right mind, and they were seized with fear. Those who witnessed the incident explained to them what had happened to the possessed man and to the swine. Then they began to beg him to leave their district. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed pleaded to remain with him. But he would not permit him, but told him and said, Go home to your family and announce to them all the Lord and his pity has done for you. So that was a lot. I understand you. There's a lot of reading. But I just kind of want to explain what's going on here. So Jesus is getting off this boat. And when he gets off the boat, he noticed this man. There's this man. And he's got all, he's, he's dealing with a lot. He has an unclean spirit. And so, in today's time, an unclean spirit would be anything not like God. Okay? So, that means when you go to school and you see folks gossiping and talking about you, that about whatever, that is an unclean spirit. When you see people rallying with each other and cussing and fighting, that is a spirit that is not of God. Correct? So, during this time, this man had an unclean spirit. And what the people did to keep him so contained they took ch uh, chains and tried to um, keep him contained, yeah. but he broke out of the chains because he was dealing with so much. You, what can you really do? Would you say, you know what, this man is crazy, so let me just go get some chains and do what everybody else is doing. Right, right. Let me find something to, something not like God to contain this man and keep him just in, in, in this little, he's just acting too crazy for me, I can't do it. What would you do? Do you have the power? Mm -hmm. A question. That's it. To cast this demon out of this man. So then again, this man, he has all these chains and he's breaking out and everybody's like, oh, he's dealing with a lot. He got too much going on for me. He's just got too much going on. Yeah. But what is so amazing about the story is there were so many people in the city that probably could have dealt with the man. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So many people in the city that didn't have the power to deal with these, these issues yeah. that was going on with them. Wow. Wow. That's a problem, you know? Right. Wow. Why does Jesus have to come up on the scene? Come on. Jesus had to travel, get on the ball, let me go deal with this man. You already there in the city. Yeah. Mm. Get in position. 
use. That's where I'm going with the word today. Get in position, you and adults, to deal with whatever you may encounter in schools, on your job, with your friends. It doesn't matter. I'm afraid that a lot of us youth, we have become a lot like the world. Come on. Jesus showed up on the scene, and he's like, don't bring the spirit, come out. Yeah. Come on out. You got to go. You're a lot. Come on out. Yeah. Come on. And the man was made whole. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, I want to talk to you guys for a minute because even us. Yes. We're like the man with the unclean yeah. spirit. Come on. Come on. Come on, me. Instead of going to Jesus about a lot of things that we're dealing with, uh-huh. yeah. we went to everything else. Wow. Come on now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. My dad, he taught a message and it was called, What's Wrong With God? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you want to just go to him? You are not going to find what you need in your church. That's right. That's right. That's right. In your coworkers, in your group, in your dad. Right. Nobody. You will not find what you need. Yeah. Let's go over to 1 Samuel 3. 1 Samuel 3. Would this man have been able to come to you? You? Good question. Adults? Good, good, good question. Come on, good question. What would you have done? Uh, what if this man that had a whole bunch of demons came at you, Eli? Come on, help. You run behind mama. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> He's crazy. Come on. Right. That's real though. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Always real. <laughs> I, um, I was talking to a lady I used to work with, and I told her, it's something about Christians, our favorite thing to say is, I'm praying for you. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Easy way out. Easy way out. Come on. Easy way out. Yeah. I'm praying for you. Yeah. Gotcha. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I'm praying for you. Come on, man. Good you brought that up. Come on now. This man got demons. Come on. Come on here. Come on now. He got to want you down there where you get pulling it out. It doesn't even matter. Right. 
people think of us. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Talk today. Talk today. Talk today. Talk today. That's it. That's the real deal. We care what people think way too much. Yeah. We have exalted people over God. Come on. Yeah. Come on. If you're seeing somebody doing something that is contrary to the way of God and you don't stand up to speak, you have just told that person, uh -huh. I endorse it.
you know, listening or whatever, but I'm not really, you know, I haven't really grown in God like that. And this makes me think about the youth. Yeah. We are young. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. We're young. But what's so amazing about the story is Eli, he was getting old in age. And so he went to go lay down. And this whole time, Samuel, Samuel is really hearing a word from God to go and meet with him. But he's like, mm, no, that don't sound right. Eli's really the master. So let me go check with Eli to see if this is him calling me or not. And so he ends up finding, uh, Eli gets tired of Samuel constantly going to him when it really wasn't um, Eli that was talking to him. It was really God speaking to Samuel. It's kind of confusing. But um, Eli basically says, Samuel, stop calling me. Stop coming in here. I'm trying to sleep. If you think that you hear a voice, call on God. And so he goes to sleep. And uh, Samuel, he says, God, if this is really you speaking, speak. Give, speak to me. Speak to me. Speak to me. And God goes and stands at the door. And God says, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. So it was almost like confirmation. Samuel got confirmation from God that he really wasn't speaking the whole time. Right. But where I want to go with this is once Samuel got confirmation that it was God speaking, yeah. God tells Samuel, okay, this is what I need you to do. Eli has committed some crime in this city. Come on. I need you to go and tell him. That I'm about to, he's going to have to pay for what he yeah, did. Yeah. So Samuel, he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on. <laughs> you want me to go tell my elder? Yeah, yeah. I'm supposed to be listening to him. Right, right. yeah. That's good, baby. <laughs> Samuel becomes afraid. Yeah, right. But youth, what I want you guys to get from this is uh, when God, yeah, come on. when you're in your word first, come on, come on, say that. When, in, when you're in your word and you're growing in the things of God, yeah. there are some things in this world that just won't agree with you. Oh, that's right. All right. All right. It is going to be your duty yeah. to speak up about it. I love this because it made me think about just how we are in the church. Yeah. We say with our mouths, God, I, I want to be on fire for you. Yeah. I want to do this and I want to do that. Yeah. Samuel, he's like, God, speak to me. Please speak to me. Give me something. Yeah. God gives it to him, but he don't want to walk it out. Right. Yeah. God gives him a word. I need you to go and tell Eli yeah. that he ain't living right, so I'm going to get him. <laughs> but Eli, he shines up and said, Samuel, he shines away. Yeah. He's like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Uh, but then we see at the end, he had the courage to go and do right. it. And that's what I'm believing for my young, for the young people. Yeah. The yeah. boldness to yeah. even go out yeah. Yeah. and say, yeah. you need to get it together. Yeah. Yeah. But also I want to uh, make a point that you have to first be in position. Right. Talk about that. Matthew 5 says, you're like the blind but leading the blind. <laughs> so if you don't have it together, you souls. You can't go out and save those around you. Yeah. So it is very important for you yeah. to get in position. Yes. Got to. I want to close with this. Ezekiel 3. Get in position. You cannot properly hear his voice if you are not in position. That's right. That's right. You That's will not have any type of power if you are not properly in position. Right. You can do it, maybe. You can say it, maybe. But it might not be how God wants you to deal with the Come issue. On. There's a way. There's a way. Right. Come on. Right. I talk to my mom about this all the time. I be so about God all the time. Yeah. But I also feel like my approach. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sometimes it might not always be right. right. Come on. Come on, baby. Oh, my mom always tell me she was like, "There's still a way." You can see folks cussing, you can see your friends cussing, yeah. but there's still a way yeah. to deal about certain people right. or certain things. But if you are not in God, you won't know how to properly right. deal right. 
Yes, with those does. people on that stand. That's right. That's it. That's it. Get in position. Yeah. Youth. Yeah. I say this all the time as well. I love that the Bible never has any type of age. It doesn't say when you're 53, you need to do this. Right. Now you can start praying for the old. Or okay. right. whenever you're 10 or whenever you turn 20, you know, now you can obtain the Holy Spirit. Come on, Lee. That's good. Jesus says, obtain the Holy Spirit. Get in me. You know, there's no age limit on it, right? There's no age limit on it, Josie. Yeah, right, 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 right. Get in the Spirit. That's it. Get in position. Ezekiel 3. How do I get in position? Okay. Good. Use, how do you get in position? He said to me, son of man, eat what you find here. Eat this scroll, then go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. Yeah. Son of man, he said to me, feed your stomach and fill your belly yes. with this scroll. I am giving you. Yeah. I ate it, and it was sweet as honey. I love it. <laughs> In my mouth. Then he said to me, son of man, go now to the house of Israel and speak my words to them. Eat of his word. You. And I love that it said it was sweet as honey. Sweet as honey. It was good. I also feel like young people, sometimes we, we, we read the word and it doesn't agree with us. We don't like that part. Right, right. Yeah. That's um, it. That's adults too. Adults too. We don't like that part. Right. When he ate, it was almost sweet. It was so good. Yes, it was. That's right. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This city of Israel was a mess. Huh. But he didn't tell them just to go straight out. Go fix that city because they're a mess. Yeah. He said, sit and eat with me first. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, come on. Well, good. Come Read on. Read your Bible. Yeah. Get full on it. I used to tell Tom, the Bible was boring. The Bible was boring. But do you want to keep living the same way? Come on. Right. Don't you want to see change? Come on. Yeah, come on. Don't you want to have some friends you can come to church with? Yes. 
spirit that's being stirred up or you don't like the way something is going. Or your friends are doing something that you know is contrary to the way of God. You are responsible for them. Use. God says, I'm not, I'm not worried about your friends. If you didn't speak up about it, the blood is on your hands. So all of us youth that sit here every Sunday, yeah, come on up. Yeah. But on Monday, mm. see something contrary to the way of God. Right. If we don't use our voice, right. we're responsible for that. Yeah. Let's close with Matthew 7. Matthew 7. What is what is judgment day? What is what is that even gonna look like? Am I going to get to heaven? <laughs> Help somebody. Matthew 7. The Bible says that we are his handiwork, right? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So we're supposed to be doing what God asks us to do, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you ain't doing it, hmm. uh. right. what would judgment day look like for you? Matthew 7. Let's look at verse 21. Focus on God. Keep your focus on God daily. Yeah. 
I say that all the time. You cannot grow in the things of God unless you're in His Word. Amen? Amen. That's right. Stand on your feet. Let's close this out with prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for this opportunity just to stand and be in your presence, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that when uh, that the youth just grow and grow and grow and grow and continue to grow in your way, Lord God. Lord God, so that when they do encounter people or friends that may not be living the right way, Lord God, give them the courage just to, to speak out, Lord God. But also, I just pray that you would just prick their hearts, Lord God, and just allow them to, to line up with you first, Lord God. Lord God, I understand that this world is so deceptive, Lord God, and this world is so evil, and it does look, look good to some, Lord God. But Lord God, I just pray that you would just Kill our taste buds for this world, yes, Lord God. Yes. I pray that you would just, just, just give us a new mind, new thoughts, yes. new ideas, Lord God. And Lord God, I pray that whenever you do encounter that person or the group of people, Lord God, give them the boldness, boldness to stand up for what is right, Lord God. And Lord God, I pray that you would just, just be pleased with them, Lord God. I just pray that you would just cover them, Lord God. Keep your angels around them, Lord God. Give them the words to say, yes. Lord God, when they do encounter their friends, their co-workers, their peers, wherever it may be, Lord God. God, just be with them, Lord God. Strengthen them in you, Lord God. And we will forever give you yes. the glory, Lord God. We want to do your work, Lord God. We want to please you in everything that we do, Lord God. So just strengthen us, guide us, Lord God. Give us the strength, Lord God. In your son's name, we pray. Amen. 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 Be in position. Yes, man, you really do. Yes. <laughs> my God, my God. That's wonderful work. Yes. God has blessed us with this morning. <laughs> now we have the morning worship. When we worship in our giving. Yes. For those online. If this ministry has truly been a blessing to you, or if God has touched your heart, the ways to give are located on top of our Facebook page. Amen? Amen. 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 Wow, what a wonderful word. Yes. And if you need an envelope, please raise your hand. And I'll sure we'll give you one.